can increase your urination while you sleep at night. Well, our next question, it comes to us from Jasmine, who happens to be in our audience. Hey, what's going on? Hi, I have a leaky bladder and I would like to know how I can change my habit or train my bladder. And um, it's to the point where I'm constantly going to the bathroom at night, like six to seven times. Okay. Which is very different than... Yeah, because that actually fits the definition of nocturia. Nocturia is if you have to get up more than two times in a night, even after you've restricted your fluids like two hours before you go to bed. Now, do you also urinate when you cough and sneeze? Yes. So the best thing for you to do is actually go to a urologist or a gynecologic urologist and get it tested out. There's a lot of diagnostic tests that we can do to try and see exactly what it is. But in training your bladder, trying to do something um, that would help, it's those pelvic floor muscles right. that actually support your bladder. They form like a little basket um, on your pelvic floor and they okay. hold up your vagina and your bladder and actually your rectum to a certain point as well. Right. And just by exercising this, because childbirth, um, decreased levels in our hormone status yes. as far as estrogen, can all weaken um, the pelvis and those pelvic muscles. So a good way to, to, to practice this would be kegels. And we always, as doctors say, do those kegels, you know, and the way to do it is when you're trying to urinate midstream, stop. And then once you've got that sort of, uh, once you've got that muscle contraction going and you've learned that, then you keep doing it over and over again. Well, women go, well, how do I know I'm doing it right? right. How can I see if it's doing, you know, helping anything other than just changes in, you know, whether or not you're going frequently? Well, they, now they've come out with actually some instruments. And as oh. pretty as this look, it may look a little scary. <laughs> Um, this is actually called the intone, and basically you put it in vaginally, and it's, it works by electrical stimulation and um, biofeedback. So this actually is going to send a little electrical shock vaginally, and so you want to put it in vaginally. You want a snug fit, so you're going to pump it up, and you're going to make it. You're going to make oh it. God. See, there it goes. <laughs> oh Bigger is better. What kind of? <laughs> in this case. Okay, so, but anyway, so what it is is it stimulates, and then you get biofeedback that tells you if your muscle squeezing is actually being effective, and your doctor actually calibrates this for you, and then you're able to take this at home, because before that, you would have to come to the doctor's office, right. and, you know, we would do the electrical stimulation, and, but now you can do it in the privacy of your own home, and get feedback, know that you're, you know, actually progressing. Now, the electrical stimulation, I'm assuming it's a small stimulation, yes. it's not a true severe shock no you would be able to yeah put your hand on this and feel it you just feel like a little okay. little buzz well, oh, because okay. yeah legitimately that would be presumably uh, painful and uncomfortable, right no so. no the, this is okay. not yeah. uncomfortable at, at all it's not unpleasant maybe so <laughs> i i think the takeaway here is Jasmine, to get this checked out yeah and there are options out there thank you so much for sharing well, thank story. you thank you now, our next question comes to us via email from Francis in Canyon, Ohio. She writes, sometimes when I go to the doctor, they order a blood test, a urine test, or both. What's the difference, and which tells my doctor more information? Well, there are a lot of scenarios where your doctor will order a urine test, or what's called a urinalysis, as well as blood tests, looking for um, other clues as to what's going on. And one, uh, one thing I'm going to show everyone here is kidney stones, because if your doctor's worried that you have kidney stones, they may first order a urine test and a blood test. Let's talk about what is a kidney stone. Well, minerals, as your kidney filters the blood, certain minimal, minerals can congregate and form kidney stones. There are different types of kidney stones. It's not a big deal if, you, if it's sitting in your kidney or it passes through your ureter, but what happens is if one of these kidney stones gets big enough and it gets trapped in your ureters, which carries urine from your kidneys to your bladder, it'll start spasming. That spasm is, is what causes intense pain. If we suspect that you have a kidney stone, we'll check your urine. We're looking for blood in the urine because oftentimes a kidney stone will cause blood in the urine. And we're also gonna make sure you don't have a concomitant urinary tract infection, which makes it more serious. And then if there's concerns, if the stone is big enough or you have bilateral stones, sometimes it can cause what's called hydronephrosis because all that pressure builds up back in the kidney and it can affect your kidney function. A blood test is what we would then look at to look at your creatinine, which is a measure of your kidney function. So we're looking for different things with different tests. Mm -hmm. And another one is diabetes. So one way that we see if, you know, that your, sort of your system's going off or going towards diabetes is we see if you're spilling sugar in your urine. 
Now that's just a little screening test. And one of the ways we can more, you know, definitively diagnose this is then with a blood test. And we do like a fasting blood test, or other women will also know we even go further sometimes from the fasting blood test to a one hour glucose test and then a three hour glucose tolerance test. So, you know, all these things can be checked with, you know, screening tests in this case with the urine for, for sugar and then the blood to further diagnose if you have diabetes or not. So there's a rhyme and a reason to why we do what we do and one is not always better than the other. Well, coming up, high blood pressure or high cholesterol, which is worse, plus the best thing to do when your number two doesn't want to come out. <laughs> Can't wait to hear this. Hey docs, I'm gonna put you on the spot. If you had a patient who had high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and you absolutely could only lower one, which would you choose? Coming up on Monday, if you like surprises, we have surprise guests, surprise house calls, surprise surgeries. You're going to love the premiere episode of The Doctors. That's on Monday. Come into VisionWorks Unlimited BOGO Sale. Buy one complete pair and get one free. Any frames, any lenses, no exclusions. Find more than a pair of glasses. Find a better you. VisionWorks. Over 40 million women live with the inconvenience, expense, and discomfort of unwanted bladder leakage. But we don't have to, because now unwanted bladder leakage can be stopped. Now there's Intone. Intone is a true medical breakthrough that actually solves unwanted bladder leakage without pills, without surgery, and without pain. Most unwanted bladder leakage is caused by lack of tone in the pelvic floor muscles. Intone stimulates these muscles to give you control again. Visit IncontrolMedical.com now so you can see how Intone can work for you. Treatments take place in the privacy of your own home in just 10 minutes per day. Intone will help you regain control. So go ahead and sneeze, cough, laugh with complete confidence. You don't have to live with unwanted bladder leakage anymore. Now there's Intone. Visit IncontrolMedical.com and talk to your doctor about Intone today.